little bits and pieces of Douglas fir, uh, eucalypts and other things, but mainly radiata and Douglas fir. 50% uh, of the radiata has been pruned and thinned, and the balance is unpruned but will be thinned. A large part of it has already been thinned to waste, on the steeper country it's already been thinned to waste, but we've obtained the, these flatter areas with a view to doing some production thinning, which is what you're seeing, seeing today. Um, the production thinning idea was, was really an afterthought, I must admit. Um, the land was all planted without much thought of, of production thinning, because there's really no history of production thinning in Melbourne that I know of mainly because the land just doesn't lend itself to it. Most of the forest land in Melbourne is too steep for production thin. But this, as these trees grew, the idea sort of grew as well, that maybe we could production thin this, and so get some revenue out of the thinning rather than thinning to waste. Which, as you probably know, thin to waste, you, you, it's a cost. It costs you about 400 to 500 dollars a hectare to thin to waste in trees of this, of this age. So if we could save that by production thinning, well that's it's a benefit to the forest owner. And we looking at the topography, the tree growth, the access, and um, at the time that log prices had climbed out of the trough they've been in for quite a few years and it seemed that we could maybe we could make some money out of production thinning here. So with the help of Mike Gifford who's uh, somewhere over there, um, we 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 put together a, a, a program here of thinning about four to six hundred hectares we think we, it was available we're sort of it's, it's flexible because it, the, the topography is li limiting still we, we can't thin everything so you get a, on a 20 degree slope the machine just can't work on those slopes so we're, we're, we're working on the best land with the flattest land we can we're, with, um, we, we, we thought that by production thinning we would save some money basically, that was the whole idea. Whether we made any money was, a, was, a, was a sort of a bonus. If we made a profit that was a bonus, we at least covered the cost of a waste thinning we were doing okay. So, but, but in doing that we, we run some quite heavy risks as well with uh, thinning at, at this age, the trees are tall and thin, they, uh, they, uh, they are very vulnerable to wind throw after a thinning like this. So we are, we are taking the risk of doing this. And we do have to run the risk of the market falling away and making the whole thing uneconomical. And you know, Murphy's Law, we started this in about May last year, and in 94 when they were planted, they might have been planted at a different spacing or something like that. So we're thinning from around about 900 stems per hectare, which uh, you can see behind you. This is unthinned, apart from the little edge, two, two rows on the edge. The, behind you there is about 900 to 1,000 stems per hectare. We're thinning it down to about 500, so, so, so we're halving the stock. And the, the yield we're getting from these sale of these of logs is about 70 to 80 tonnes per hectare. So you can, you know, and that's and the, the machinery here is producing about 100 tonne a day, round figures. You compare that with the 400 to 500 we were talking about at the first stop. So it's, the scale of it is different. What's the market for the products? Yeah, the, the, the products are going, the bulk of it is going at the moment to the Nelson chip mill, the NPI chip mill at Richmond. So we, we negotiated a price with them that made it basically break even on that, on that product. And uh, so we're, we're selling the bulk of it goes to the chip mill, random length, down to any small as you can hold together, any, anything goes. And the, but we are cutting K grade and KIS grade, which are two export grades to go to pick. And um, those two are the ones that make some money out of the whole, whole process. No, well, we, we post, they look beautiful posts. And I've had the gold mine people ring me saying, I'm following a truck down the road from Manuka Island. Why aren't, we, why aren't you selling us those logs? They're beautiful. But they're good. They won't buy a post unless it's 20, trees 20 years old. And so these are only 15 and a half. They won't, when they tell them that, they say, "Oh, yeah, fair enough. We don't want it." So it's a shame. They look beautiful posts, but they won't buy them because they're too young. And that's, that's the reason. So at the moment, and being brutally honest, we're losing money on this operation. We're losing about 
150 to 200 dollars per hectare is what, what it's costing us to keep this going. Well, that's less than the four to five hundred dollars a hectare we pay to thin it to waste. So we, we think it's worth doing. So that's 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 the, the bones of the operation. Um, that includes the loading.